I'm William Mwembe and this is Business Time. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country and coming up in the program today. Economists to reflect on situation and chart the way forward at its annual LEC conference. And also in the program, Kangan Kudere Eft's mine is poised to provide over one billion US dollars in economic and social benefits. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. In our main story in the program today, local economists under the Economics Association of Malawi meet next week to discuss trends and possible remedies to challenges facing the Malawi economy. They meet as the economy has remained volatile, riddled with rocketing inflation, forex scarcity and local currency volatility, among other factors. The government's budgetary operations is also not spared. The fiscal space has faced intense pressure emanating from public expenditure overruns vis-a-vis inability to meet revenue generation targets. These notwithstanding harsh weather conditions, exogenous shocks and structural challenges have stifled growth prospects. But what should we expect from the ECAMA annual conference? Florence Company is ECAMA executive member. It means a lot uh, because we're not just looking at um, the amount itself, but it's the thought behind it to say what will this money do? And for us, we look at the annual economic conference as a critical platform where we bring in uh, different minds to de deliberate on matters that can improve the economy. And uh, we are glad that MG Global is also having that similar view or perspective in terms of uh, how they look at the annual conference. So that's where we are coming from. You should expect a lot. Uh, we are at a point where as economists we are saying does the current model that is driving economic policy is working for us? Why we are asking that question is because we have seen that the economy is getting more and more vulnerable. The shocks are getting more frequent but also the variety of the shocks uh, is expanding and we feel that uh, it's time that we look at uh, how we organize ourselves as an economy. Possibly there are other models that we can consider or other ways of looking at the economy that we need to start thinking about uh, more deeply. So the conference is there now to enable us achieve that. So as I indicated, what has driven uh, this uh, theme, actually, our theme is uh, economic priorities for a vulnerable economy. Our economy is getting more and more vulnerable. One, because the shocks are getting more frequent, but there, there is also a lot of variety in the shocks. Uh, so with that in mind, we are saying how we are governing an economy. Maybe we need to bring in these other variables now and say what can work. So that's the perspective uh, we are coming from. So in terms of what needs to change, the conference will now uncover that because we are bringing in different experts to share their perspectives uh, given what we have seen elsewhere, but also our understanding of the economy to say what needs to be added on to how we are doing things to make sure that we see meaningful growth going forward. They do. Uh, I think if, if you've been to our conferences, you notice that we bring in the drivers uh, of the economy but you would also notice that it's the, the variety of shocks that is uh, complicating matters in our economy. And uh, we feel that this year's conference is critical because it's taking now the discussions out of uh, BAU or business as usual. So we believe that uh, given the quality of the attendees or the sectors and their backgrounds, we have been making impact uh, but it may not be seen over, overnight, but we feel that gradually uh, our impact is being felt. Now on Tuesday, taxation and audit firm AMG Global donated 4 million kwacha towards the ECAMA conference. Libanon Sosa is business and development manager at AMG Global. What inspired us so much to uh, give them a shot this time around was that uh, they're a professional body. You know we promote professionalism and we also encouraged by the same. 
Now, for them to have that uh, conference work out very well, they need such kind of financing. So they came knocking on our door, and we thought it was, say, okay, fine. I think this is very necessary to do so. It will benefit not only them, us as well, and I'm sure the entire uh, Malawi nation will benefit from ECAMA. We know what ECAMA is, basically, so it will benefit the whole Malawi. Uh, our expectation is very high. We are very hopeful that Malawi will be helped. We can see what we're going through at the moment. Uh, uh, there's quite a problem which everyone else can see at the moment. But um, this is the point which has helped not only now, but it's been there before and they've helped a number of times. That's why also we came in to say, okay, fine, if we could do this, likely it will help bring good results from, 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 from the end hour. So uh, looking at it, we believe in that uh, the end hour will bring in solutions which will heal the Malawi economy, not in the short run, but also in the long run. But having problems at the moment is uh, maybe main interest. But for the future as well, yeah, we also hope for that they will help us in that way. Well, it's quite interesting. Uh, we work together basically. We have got so many economists who are also accountants at the moment. We work hand in hand. I know they're coming from different industry. We're also in a different industry. But then, if we come up together on the highway, like you find that we, uh, we work together. We promote each other. This benefits not only uh, them, like I put it before or us, but benefit the whole Malawi industry. So uh, we are believing that when the economy is doing well, we're also going to do well, basically. We'll find business in a way, we'll network with them, and then you know, at the end of the day, they will still come in looking for accountants to account for whatever has transpired. Auditors to come in as well to check if the books are, what the accountants done are, are also okay. And what the economics have, economists have contributed to the economy also is. So we work together in that way. The professional body, we are belonging to another professional body. But if you look at these professional bodies when they work together, Malawi will be very good. Now, moving on in other business news, Kangan Kuderia 8's mine is poised to provide over one billion US dollars in economic and social benefits to Malawi, Miner Lydian Resources Limited projects. The mine's value would be created through taxes, royalties, jobs and business opportunities over the initial life line, according to the firm's chief executive officer. Uh, when operations commences, Kangankude in Balaka district is said to be recognized as one of the world's largest rare earth deposit holders. More in this report. Remember, this is Business Time, a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. We'll be right back. Welcome back and moving on with the program. A renewed call has been made for African countries to fulfill their promises regarding agricultural development and allocating sufficient resources to the sector's growth. As part of regional commitments, countries pledged to allocate at least 10% of their national budgets to agriculture to ensure food security and eradicating, eradicating poverty under the Malabo Declaration. However, as Joseph Sacco, Commissioner for Agriculture, Rural Development and Blue Economy and Sustainable Environment at the African Union Commission highlights, no country has fully met these commitments. The issue of uh, investment and finance is really a challenge for us. Uh, the way I look at it from my experience as a commissioner is that uh, we have uh, the, our head of state committed themselves on the 10%. So I think we should continue insisting that 10% should be allocated on the budget from the public uh, expenditure of the of uh, the, the the member state to put to give to allocate ten percent of uh, that global budget the national budget to agriculture. If you don't do that, you will not have results because you can come do strategy, make your strategy, action plan, roadmap. But if you don't go to implementation and implementation has implication you need to have investment you have you need to fund this program of uh, implementation that is why to me what i see is our head of state that we should have political commitment our head of state they have to look at it and really 
you know, they comply on what they did, you know, they decided, comply with their commitment. That commitment has to be implemented. If we don't implement it, we'll always depend on external uh, uh, funding of our own program. And that is not really very good for a continent that wants its sovereignty. Because when the, the, the partners come to fund a program, they have their own agenda. You know, nobody will give you things like this, you know. You, they have their own agenda, and at times you need to comply with their agenda instead of you to focus where the problem of Africa is. Like, for instance, 60 to 70 percent of our population are rural. But we don't see any impact. They will say, okay, we are helping Africa, we are helping Africa. We don't have a good, good roads, mostly in the agriculture sector, because we need to, you know, to transport, you know, our the good from the farm to to the city or from the rural area to the city. We, you don't have light, you don't have electricity, uh, you don't have water, you don't have road infrastructure. Infrastructure. The rural development should be really a priority of the government because you need to put schools. This is sixty at seventy percent of people that are living there. So when you are going to 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 see, are you reducing poverty when those people are still poor? So those are the indicators that we need to be really focusing. And this new uh, 10 years action plan is bold, very inclusive. You know, we have, uh, uh, so we identify uh, seven, uh, six, uh, the other time the commitment was seven. But this time the, the commit, the uh, strategic, uh, we have six strategic objectives. So let me just uh, uh, present it to you quickly. The first one is to intensify hmm, a sustainable food production, uh, agro-industrialization, because we need to add value. We need to go to the value chain. Uh, agro-industrialization and also trade, because we are talking about the inter-African trade, and we have the IFCFTA. So, the, you know, under the IFCFTA, the, you know, we need to we, we need to, to start trading amongst ourselves. But this one also is another, is another uh, issue, because connectivity amongst us is a problem. Visa integration, because this is a very nice tool, good tool for integration on the continent. But when you have all, you still have those challenges, those gaps, and you don't solve it, you know, even the, the currency is not the same from one country to another. So we need really to, you know, we are working on that. We really need to, you know, have, make sure that uh, we are focusing all these uh, issues of uh, uh, inter-trade. We have standard, uh, the standards, sanitary and phytosanitary. All these are issues that are very, very dangerous because many people are dying of uh, foodborne disease because of uh, food contamination of food. So all these are uh, issues that, so it is embedded on the commitment number one here when we are talking about agro-industrialization. You cannot industrialize processing by making, uh, you know, by making food that is going to contaminate the population. So the second one is boosting the investment. The question you asked me about funding. It is part of uh, this uh, uh, this, uh, strategic objective. So it is boosting investment and finance in order to accelerate the transformation of agriculture on our continent. The third one is uh, ensuring uh, food and nutrition security. Because you cannot have food only, the food has to be nutritive. So you know, you have to have a nutritious food so that, uh, you know, the children at that age that they need to really have a good nutritious food so that they can grow up and have a, you know, we can have a human capital that is apt and is going to really implement all these programs that we are living in the Agenda agenda 2063. So this is the third the third. The third uh, uh, strategic uh, ob- um, uh, objective, and the fourth is advancing inclusivity and uh, equity uh, livelihood. When we are talking about uh, uh, advancing inclusivity, gender, as you know, 60% of the labor on the farm is women, but they are not empowered, they don't have access to school, they don't have access even to sa- sanitary issues. So that one, they have to be part of the goal of this, uh, this uh, big agenda that uh, we are putting for transforming agriculture. Now, moving on to other business news, import substitution is a conversation Malawi has had for a while. Largely, the idea is to cut volume of imports while maximizing the country's exporting potential and in turn generate more forex. 
Innovation and value addition should be at the heart of the drive. We speak with Daniel Kuzombe, proprietor and managing director for Ecolite, a local manufacturer of LED bulbs on position of innovators and small-scale business operators in building a competitive age. My name is Daniel Ekali Kuzombe. I'm the founder and the managing director of Deck Engineering and Electrical Contractors. We are into production of uh, Ecolite LED bulbs. And the brand name Ecolite is coming from my name Ekali and English word light, which I made Ecolite. I started uh, producing uh, these bulbs in 2020 with uh, a prototype which it was successful after they tested and uh, we have certification from MBS and uh, from there we started producing and uh, we are now on produ uh, mass production now we are going to mass production and also we are also applying for ISO certification also so that we can be able to export also uh, the solution is uh, it's uh, energy efficient LED bulb. So the solution which these bulbs are uh, providing the country is efficient energy solution. Uh, we are much focusing on energy in the energy sector, and also these bulbs they will also help Malawi to generate forex also because we want to start exporting. Uh, in input solution, our bulbs. Uh, if you see the certification itself, it passed with the almost 100%. So it means these bulbs are high, well, are of high quality. And uh, and these bulbs, all the bulbs which are being impo uh, imported in Malawi, some of, are of high quality and some are of less quality. So these bulbs will completely shut down the importation of LED bulbs in Malawi. The demand is very high and the production capacity is low for now, but we are trying to uh, increase production because we are planning to buy automated machines of which if all goes well, by December this year, we'll have automated machines which can be able to produce 20,000 bulbs per hour or per day. It, it depends on the machine which we are going to buy. Well, with that story, we've also come to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time. It is a magazine program in which we bring you major business and economic news stories, making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumembe. Thanks for watching and always remember, if it doesn't make money, then it doesn't make sense. Stay safe and bye for now.